you get excited? <laughs> I have gaming, I have friends, look at you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about the voice of the character. Okay. And how you kind of developed that and where she came from. Okay. I said I don't want to talk about myself now. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, you know, she, we, we are a little bit different, the main character and I. The um, main character's name is Maeve, my name is Shay. <laughs> Very distinct to her. Are you telling me what that's? She does. Um, she has a lot of humor. Uh, she has a lot of goals. She has a lot of, um, of dreams and, and friends. Um, and she's very, she's into guys, and she's not afraid to say it. And uh, guys aren't always into her. But um, that's that's the main conflict that we that we work around. Um, yeah. So the main love interest, Cole. Uh, did he come from anybody? Uh, we all had a call. <laughs> Everyone's had a call. Right. Confirm or deny. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, he's definitely he's a very different love interest. Yeah. He's not like he's not a vampire. He's not a millionaire. <laughs> he doesn't have a jet. He's not gonna die for you. Um, yeah. You know, he's a he's a, a typical guy that doesn't know what he wants either, and is super frustrated because of it. I think that's sort of real though, when you come down to it. Um, yeah. And I think that there's a lot of very kind of real aspects to this. Was that part of what you were aiming for? Yes, absolutely. I wanted real, I didn't want Rosie. Um, I'd seen enough of it, and I think that, you know, like, there's a place for it. There's a place for the romances where the men would die for you and, yeah. um, and carry you into castles and all that sort of thing. But, um, you know, this is an experience that I think, like I said, everyone goes through. And I want them to feel not alone in that. Um, I, I want to close that gap a little more. And I guess you can write your own book too when you have uh, your first heartbreak or your first uh, first experience with love. Yeah. Q and A. Shall we? Q and A. Shall we? Do you were great. Can I give you a hug? That was so <laughs> fun. <laughs> we were wonderful. We had like chemistry. There was a lot of tension. There was a lot of at times, but pretty good chemistry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Saucy. So saucy. <laughs> no, Uncle Joe. No. <laughs> no. When, when do you write? When do I write? I write um, usually at night. I'm usually pretty late. Yeah. What's that face for? <laughs> <laughs> My family's going to be so awkward with the Q&A. They're going to be so weird. <laughs> They're going to be really hard on me, too. Um, yeah, I, I usually write between like 1 and 2 a.m. Yeah, but... Since I write on the phone, I've written a couple of scenes in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who else hit me? No, Uncle Roger. <laughs> who is your favorite uncle? <laughs> um, on. Warren, oh my gosh, I'm scared. No, no, okay. well, what was your hardest scene to write? What was your favorite scene to write? Um, I think my hardest scene to write, there was a scene in the hospital, which I won't, I won't do anything away, um, but there was one between um, the main character and her dad, and her dad is um, just an amazing man, uh, just a lot of humor, and uh, always told her she can do whatever, she can be normal, um, and so he never really treated her as someone with a disability, um, but when she's in the hospital, you kind of you're kind of stuck with facing it, and um, she's kind of in and out of consciousness. Um, but he takes her hand and he just says, "You can't leave me," and uh, that was a hard scene to write, uh, you know, for personal reasons. But um, it was it was it was a good one, I think. Yeah, uh, favorite. Uh, Want to read it? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Lauren, you can't change anything now. It's done, okay? It's done. I would change it for you if I had to. All right, let's see here. All right, so I'm just going to read about a page. Um, this is a scene where uh, Cole and me were on a date. They're at a mini golf um, resort. That sounds weird. A five-star mini golf resort. I guess. Um, and so Maeve is, is kind of freaking out because she got there early, as she always does. Um, she never wants to be the first one to arrive. She's uh, nervous and self-conscious about the things like that. But um, she is freaking out because the mini golf has now added bricks around all the holes. 
which they was not there before. So her chair would have a hard time going over that. Um, and so she's about to say, you know, we cancel it, you know, go home, we'll do this another time, pick another place. Um, but she uh, she's ambushed by Cole arriving anyway. Cole, I said, hey. I inched towards him and bumped the side of his leg with my wheelchair affectionately, the way I did in the mall. He didn't yet look down, even when I bumped him, as if it were normal to him. But his arm fell over me and engulfed me. This it, he said. Finally, his eyes met my gaze. They were a little sleepy, a little removed, but something about the way they didn't waver made me weak. Yep, this is it. I gestured to the course. This is my childhood, ruined. Uh-oh. He shoved his hands uh, back in his pockets. They renovated it, I said. I'm really sorry, but I don't think we can play. Why not? They added bricks around the course. So? So my chair can't get over them. It'd be fine, boom bowl. What do you mean? Come on. He moved forward, and the landed on his belt jingled with his peas. At the club rack, he grabbed two balls and the longest player they had. I grabbed the shortest. Then we approached the bricks. So, nerves and embarrassment shook my voice. Are you thinking about? I felt a tug on my wheelchair from behind. I got you, said Cole, go. I rubbed my joystick forward, and Cole forced down the back of the heavy chair to pop a wheelie as I fired over the bricks. He didn't even grunt. My wheels surged over smooth turf, and I grinned. Cole stepped over the brick and tilted his head to stretch his neck. He wasn't winded at all. We don't have to do the other holes, I said, but I was still smiling. We'll just do this one. Nah, said Cole. You sure? I wasn't about to question how many holes he could, uh, sorry, Mom. <laughs> 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 he stared at me, and his mouth was packed in the most perplexing smile. Demir relaxed, but not going anywhere. I banged my club against the astro turf. All right then, hope you're scared. Cole pretended the putter was a driver and swung it hard with his whole back. The club whipped through the air and, and stopped over his shoulder. The way everything moved at his force, the way he shrugged to fill all whatever space was around him. Everything I can't do, can't be, he was. I wondered if I was anything he couldn't be. You know what, I'm going to ask another question. Is there anything oh, that got taken out of the book that you wish you could have kept in? No, no, no. Hey, look. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you know what, Warren? I think we found a good ground. I think we did. I think we were both happy. There was nothing that, the only thing that broke my heart was changing the title which was necessary, but um, originally it was titled Shooting Cole Stone, um, with, with shooting as a play on words with the, with the cam film camera. But unfortunately, the shooting in Florida had happened, and there was a, a frequency of school shootings, and so we were concerned about having uh, a YA book being in, in high schools with the word shooting in it. Um, so that, that kind of broke my heart, but um, I, I understand it, and I, I'm all for it. So this is not a lesson. Yeah. I feel like you would have had more grace with your club on. Yeah, absolutely. Anything that's duplicated is good to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is this? Fifty Shades of Grey? Thanks. She was like, thanks. She was like, good for you. And I said, I try to do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, you know, there's a lot of elements like that, a lot of um, <laughs> contrasts between the seriousness in the book and the humor in the book, because um, that was a, a concoction that I was intending for. Yeah. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the like disability in literature, yeah. because I think, <laughs> um, I mean, I think it is something you don't get a chance to see very often, particularly with protagonists, where it's, it's about them, but it's not. It's also just a love story. Um, right. Is this what you would have wanted to read when you were younger, or? Um, yeah, you know, there, you're right. There are not many books that have representation of people with disabilities, but I didn't write this, again, I didn't write this as a statement or with an intention, um, you know, to have the first character in a wheelchair or anything like that. Certainly growing up, I wish that I saw a little more of it. Um, in Percy Jackson, the book starts out with um, the teacher is in a wheelchair, but he's disguised as a centaur, I believe it is. And I remember reading the first two chapters of that where he's still in a wheelchair. I was like, this is so great, I love it. And then he became a centaur, and I was like, thanks. Like, that's, you know, I can't become a centaur. Um, <laughs> but um, I think my editor, Warren, said it very well um, when discussing the aspect of disability in this book, and that it's not Maeve's only chance at love, it's just her first chance, um, which is very different uh, you know, compared to some other examples uh, in, in, the, in the market. Do you want to tell me what you feel about other books? <laughs> no, I, yeah, I love everybody. Everybody. <laughs>
but uh, fire didn't exist. So take away fire and what happens? You lose metal, you lose all sorts of things. Um, so how does that play on religion? How does that play on people's um, social relationships? How does that play on survival? Uh, so yeah, think about that one small change, not a huge one. Or, I don't know. <laughs> Besides myself? <laughs> um, uh, well, the reason I chose S.C. Migali, very cliche, by the way, every author does that, J.K. Rowling, E.B. White, right, J.R.R. Tolkien, um, was C.S. Lewis, uh, he's my favorite author. Um, with my advanced mind, the first thing I did was buy an autograph of C.S. Lewis, of his friend. And then I found an autograph of his I like better, so I bought that one too. <laughs> and now I'm trying to sell one autograph. <laughs> so if anyone wants to buy a C.S. Lewis autograph, come see me. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Alright, do you want to, actually, you know what, before we start to off, is there any books that you want to recommend now that you've read recently that you think are awesome? I have been reading um, oceanography and the history of Rome, and uh, I'm, I'm a student in college. I don't read quite a bit. Why film in this? Are you studying film? Oh yes, um, yeah. So film is a, a side passion of mine. Uh, I did study film at community college. Um, I took two years of it, and I have a web series I'm working on. It's been put in post production hell for two years now. Um, but that should be coming out soon. Uh, and I also did a, a short film in Prague, the Czech Republic, where uh, I directed it, I wrote the script for it, uh, and every single cast member and crew member uh, spoke Czech, no English. <laughs> I had one interpreter, and um, it ended up being fantastic. It was uh, a period piece set in the early, the turn of the century, um, so it was totally costumed. Uh, it, it made use of the, the beautiful historical architecture around the Czech Republic, so um, I had a, a fantastic experience there. But my caretaker didn't speak English either, <laughs> so I was like using Google Translate to say like what shirt I wanted, and I wanted that, and you know, <laughs> so, but it worked, it worked. It worked Google Translate. <laughs> What's Google Translate? Absolutely. Okay. Any particular film that you, I think, would have inspired this as well? Maybe. That would have inspired the book? Yeah. Anything that you um, I am a big John Green fan, so I, you know, definitely, um, I, I did enjoy The Faulkner Stars. Uh, I would say this was less motivated by other people's film, more my experience on sets behind the scenes, um, which is really interesting. I mean, if you're interested in film, this is a good book for you, too, because it has a lot of uh, behind the set lingo you know, that, that we use and explains a lot of things. Um, so that, that was a, a big part of my life that uh, I've made a lot of friends and a lot of great memories for that. A funny story from that. Funny story from, I don't know, from Prague. Oh, from Prague. Why not? Um, did you keep going? Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. My sister, oh, here we go. I'm going to throw you in the bus. Uh, I'm going to throw you in the bus now. My sister came to visit me in Prague. And um, she left her wallet on the plane. So she uh, with, uh, with her ID and all her credit cards. So um, I had to come rescue her at the airport. And I came in this like enormous like handicapped van. You know, they, they should have been playing like dun 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 dun